In the most visited city in the world, there is one iconic structure which happens to be the most visited paid monument in the world, defining the skyline, defining the city, stretching 330 meters into the sky. That's over a thousand feet and opened in 1889. Did you really think that E could be for anything besides Eiffel? That's right. E is for Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower. My name is Oliver G. This is the Eiffel Tower. And let's start with some music from Press Maxim. So of course, of course, he was always going to be for Eiffel, right? Well, maybe not. You'll hear more about that in a second. I want to talk about that music from Press Max and 2, but first, strap in. In fact, you should almost press pause because this is a quiz. I wanted to bring... We didn't know how to do the Eiffel Tower in a fun way, so we thought, why not revive the pub quiz that we did during lockdown later and I... Uh, And so what you're going to hear now are 10 questions getting kind of progressively more difficult. And here are the rules. If you can answer out loud in the three or four, five seconds that I give you and correctly, you get a point. So there's 10 points up for grabs. If you have to wait for one of the hints that I give and then you get it right, you can have half a point. So there's a maximum of 10. I have a feeling some of you Paris geniuses are going to get 10. Uh, But even if you're new to the city, Uh, new to the channel you'll still be able to have some fun and have some good guesses in there it's written in a way that you can guess even if you've got no idea now uh, not all the questions are going to be read out by my wife lovely Lena and me we have a special guest I think for the first time it's a guest who's never been to Paris before very special for me Uh, a bit different from you you'll be hearing that about halfway through So before we get into the quiz, let's listen to what Press has to say. If you're new around here, Press Maxson is our maestro, and he matches the music to the episode, usually quite ingeniously. No exception to the rule here. He says, so far in the AB season, I've been season, I've been season, terrible, I know, that's what he's saying, I've been seizing the opportunity to showcase some non-French artists, think American, English, Canadian, but for the Eiffel Tower now, a fixture on the Paris skyline, we return to one of the giants, a fixture in the landscape of French music, it's Charles Trenet's song, Yad de la joie, in English, there's joy, which includes the translated lyric, There's joy, the Eiffel Tower's going for a walk like a crazy gal who'll jump feet first into the Seine. And during my recording process, of course, I bumped it up to the key of, you guessed it, E. Wonderful press as usual, nailed it, I love it, the music is great too, you'll be hearing it throughout the episode. I should also point out, at the end of the episode, I'll read out a comment. I don't usually read out social media comments, but I'll do it this time because someone's pulled me up on something I got very wrong in the last episode. I'll get to that at the end. But first, here comes a bit more music and a pub quiz. Best of luck to you all. Here come 10 questions about the Eiffel Tower. Welcome a recurring co-host, my lovely wife, Lena Nongi. Hello, everyone. I know why you're excited. <laughs> yeah? Because this is the pub <laughs> quiz. Tell? This is the pub quiz from lockdown all over again. I know. It's a, it's a classic. It's it a kept, revival. It kept us going. And since, in the years since, uh, countless emails from people saying it kept them going. Ah. So this one can be dedicated to all we those bring people you out there. Back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so you're here for the first round. I mm-hmm. think... Uh, Right before we get into it, thank you to you, Lena, for convincing me to do E is for Eiffel Tower. Well, it seems obvious, and sometimes obvious is good. I you should, know? Yeah, behind the scenes, I was thinking to do Elevated Walkway or the Egu, the sewers. Yeah, but I was like, 
how much do people actually know about the Eiffel Tower? I know, like, personally, I don't know much myself, so... You know it's 330 metres tall at the tip, because you told me that one. <laughs> well, yes. Without further ado, first round, mm-hmm. I'll start. All right. Uh, and uh, once again, at home, yell out the answer. We'll give you five seconds. You can pause it and discuss it, but then I'm going to say the correct answer. Okay. All these are worth one point. How tall in metres is the Eiffel Tower? Come on, that's an easy one. I mean, rewind a few seconds and you got the answer. The answer is 330 metres. That is correct. You know, it was, uh, and incidentally, the appropriate time to start an apro. 3.30. <laughs> In the afternoon. Why not? You can do question, question two is on you. Okay. Which arrondissement is the tower in? Uh-huh. Clue, there are 20 arrondissements, mm-hmm. if you're not familiar with Paris, so you have a 1 in 20 chance of guessing it. Yeah. Uh, another clue? It's... It's more than 5 and less than 10. There you go. No more clues. <laughs> uh, the answer, of course, is the 7th arrondissement, where we used to live. Mm-hmm. Probably the most touristy arrondissement in Paris. Yeah. They're probably. getting harder. Each one's getting harder, so no more clues, I think. All right. Question three. True or False. Only the Montparnasse Tower in Paris is taller than the Eiffel Tower. So in the city of Paris, only Montparnasse is taller. That big, ugly skyscraper. (laughs) Have you heard that theory, or not theory, but like that old joke that people say that the Tour Montparnasse is the box that the Eiffel Tower came in? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Fun fact, you know they were going to build a bunch of them, like five or six of them. And really? They, yeah, and, they, and I think people uh, were it's against it. Outrage. Mm. Fun fact number two, Guy de Maupassant, yeah. the author, uh-huh. uh, hated the Eiffel Tower with such venom that he was said to eat lunch in it every single day up on the first or second floor <laughs> so he didn't have to look at it. And I say, I say to you, Guy, what an idiot. <laughs> Just go inside a restaurant and face the wall, you fool. <laughs> Oh, well, what I think he secretly loved yeah, it. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, yeah it's like when a boy pulls confess. a girl's hair. Yeah, and he's like, I right. hate this girl. We all know what it means. We know. Uh, question, oh, by the way, the answer, false. Oh, yeah, false. Yeah, not yeah. even nearly close. The Eiffel Tower is huge. Mm, it is. 330 meters. Three, 330. Mm. <laughs> question four. Okay, which slippery winter activity can you do on the Eiffel Tower some winters? So that is, which slippery winter activity can you do on the Eiffel Tower some winters? That seems fairly easy. Slippery winter activity. That could be something. The answer is ice skating. It is. You can ice skate in some cool parts of Paris, actually. Yeah, there's uh, in the Grand Palais. Yeah, we've never done it. And Desperate to do that. Yeah, I also on ice top skate. of the... Um, oh, what's that department store called? Uh, Lafayette. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah mm. that and by amazing. the town hall sometimes they have it. Yeah. Yeah, and in the Tuileries garden at the Christmas market. Yeah, I wonder if it's always like, is it as good as it seems, you know? Well, you're a Swede, so, I mean, you guys... <laughs> Got the fjords. You guys, I know, that's Norway. <laughs> you guys skate on lakes. Like, yeah, nothing can I be skate as good. in my bathtub some winters. Tell me about it. Mm. Now, number five. This is getting harder, okay? Mm. So, I'm going to do an accent here. I'm going to guess the accent. <laughs> okay. Which famous American climbed the Eiffel Tower, met with Gustav Eiffel himself at the top, so mm-hmm. we're talking in the 1880s, 90s, uh, and wrote in the guest book. This is what he wrote, and I'll do the accent. Though, uh, full disclosure, no idea if this famous American spoke like this or is from this part of the States, <laughs> okay. or if this part of the States exists with such an accent. <laughs> That's enough caveats. <laughs> sure. To Monsieur Eiffel, the engineer, the brave builder of so gigantic and original specimen of modern engineering, from one who has the greatest respect and admiration... Why are you laughing? <laughs> No for, for all engineers, including the great engineer, the Bon Dieu, as in the great God above, ah, the okay. Bon Dieu, from blank. So this kind of mm. clues in mm. what kind of a person mm. would reference all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, when you said climb the Eiffel Tower, yeah. I in my head, I pictured like, you know, s- scale the outside of You're it. You're not the only one who thinks that because I say that a lot. And yeah. when I did the things to do in Paris before you die list or 50 uh-huh. things, people were like, what do you mean climb it? Ah. You can climb it by walking up the steps or you climb the stairs or you can take the elevator. Okay. So this is the less adventurous. I just mean go up. Right. Okay. So which American was it? The answer, 
Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, the mm -hmm. great engineer himself. Mm -hmm. Last question of this round. All right. Lovely Lena. Gustav Eiffel, the head engineer, contributed to another exceptionally famous world monument. And which one could mm. that be? He contributed to lots, actually. Yeah, that's true. But w uh, he did bridges in Porto, that's in true. Portugal. Yeah, and yeah. south of France. Yeah. He did a lot of bridges. Mm. Um, but and you can kind of understand that by looking at the Eiffel Tower. It's like, true. you know, that sort of construction. But none of those bridges are exceptionally famous. No. Um, Not even close. So this is, uh, you know, top, I don't know, top 20 monuments in the world, probably. Mm, probably. I mean, easily. Yeah. And the answer is the Statue of Liberty. Voila! Voila, the first round is over, all worth one point. Uh, write down your scores if you want or keep it in your head. Six possible so far. Now we're going to get into round two, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And I'm going to say to you, my dear lovely Lena, uh? merci and au revoir. Merci! First round over. How did you do? Are you ready for round two and slightly harder questions? I think you are. This recording I did in central England with a lady who's very special to me. Some of you guys would have already heard her in the audiobook for Paris on Air. Here comes my grandma. <laughs> And now for part two of this quiz, I would like to welcome my grandma. Welcome to the show, grandma. Hello. <laughs> Happy 90th birthday for the other day. Thank you very much. I looked up online the year you were born. Yes. Was 1933. Three, yeah. The same year that that singer Dalida was born, who I was playing you before. Do you remember? Really? Yeah. Is that true? Right. And uh, I don't know if you liked her music. It was in French, but it was a little bit... Oh, yes. It was very nice. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. I, uh, we're not here to talk about Dalida, though. We're here to talk about the Eiffel Tower. But I think just so people get a sense of the quiz master and the quiz mistress, that's you, um, you don't really know Paris very well at all. No. No, I don't. I'm afraid... I've never been. You know what? I was thinking you're the first person on this show ever in six or seven years who's not been to Paris. Well, yes, but you must realise that in my day we didn't travel. Mm. We, we, did, we just didn't travel around. And, uh, and since then I've been busy, you know, doing things and just never got around to it, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm curious because I know you did. You went to Australia to see us oh, and yes. so on. So you did some big trips. But... When you were, like, nowadays people in their 20s and 30s mm. and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, 80s, yeah. they do quick trips sometimes, you yes, know? Yes, yes. And for people in London, they go down to Paris a lot. Yeah. Do you feel you missed out on going over there or was it just not ever? I, I would like to have gone. Mm. Yes, I would like to have gone. But, you know, with all my family being so far away and all in different world parts of the world, I've probably gone to your mother, which is... Uh, Australia more but yes I have travelled around we've we've been on boat coach trips and boat trips and uh, yeah I have travelled but no like when when I met you and Lena uh, we were in London weren't we that's right that's right so, I, so you I, have you've done pretty well for yourself yes, but just yes. never Paris but the beauty of this show is we can bring people to Paris even if they've that's never right. been and that's what we'll do right now and I think maybe we can start with one of your questions okay uh, if you'd like to read out question number seven right what nickname does the Eiffel Tower share with Margaret Thatcher I purposely gave you that question because Margaret Thatcher is British, a yeah. British politician. Yeah. They're getting harder for people at home. So if you're thinking, I've got no idea, that's the whole point. Do you have any idea, Grandma? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> See if you <laughs> – I'll give people at home a few more seconds to figure it out. But the clue – I'm not going to give any clues, actually. I'll tell you the answer. Both are called the Iron Lady. 
Ah, yes. Because the Eiffel Tower is oh, made yes, of iron. Oh, yes, I know she was called the Iron Lady. Yeah, yeah. Right. I probably would have, should have thought that I one. I should have given you a chance to I, guess I that. probably should have thought that one because I did know, she, yes, we called her the Iron Lady. You know, in, um, uh, when you think of Paris, I mean, you know that I live there and so you probably know more about it than obviously if I didn't live there. But is the Eiffel Tower one of the first things that comes to your head? Yes. Anything else? Uh, no, not really. French, just that French people speak French. Yeah, and, that's pretty. <laughs> you know, um, no, Eiffel Tower would have been the thing I would have thought about. It's lucky that that's the subject for the day. Yes. I was always wanted to kidnap you and take you down to Paris for the first I know time, you have. but you never let me. No, which dear. isn't really how kidnappings work, to be fair. <laughs> No, I've got a little bit too old for it now, I'm afraid. This next question, I'm going to read it, and and you can have a guess, okay? So this is my one. You don't know what this question is yet. It's an unusual one. In 1987, a New Zealand man tied himself to the tower and did something very illegal, much to the annoyance of Parisian police waiting below. What did he do? Mm. Well, I haven't got a clue about that. You have to guess. I guess. <laughs> I don't. Take your mind out of the gutter, Grandma. <laughs> I didn't say what the first thing that jumped in my mind. <laughs> Was he naked? In your... <laughs> he wasn't naked. No. Uh, I don't. <laughs> he tied his so to the well, I've got a clue. <laughs> I'll give everyone at home three more seconds, and then I give a clue, and you can't get any points anymore. So okay. do you want one more guess? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, here's a clue. He tied himself by the ankles, and the rope was made of elastic, and he jumped. Oh, my goodness. He was, bungee jumped. That's right. <laughs> that's right. He bungee jumped. Yeah. Oh, right. He climbed up there in the evening, A.J. Hackett was his name, an oh. entrepreneur, and he did a bungee jump, and there's a video of it from the 80s of him coming right from the top through the Good middle Lord. and then doing, 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 and the police, you can see these irritated police marching around, but they can't reach him because no. he's, he's yeah. still hanging. Oh, my Lord. And then they lowered him down and arrested him, and he grabbed a champagne and took a sip, <laughs> and he said that he thought that the French police were reasonable and wouldn't... Uh, get him in trouble you know what he did afterwards he opened bungee jump locations all around the world especially in new zealand yes i know yeah what couldn't have done that oh i did it yes i know not on the tower but in. no uh, no i know yeah anyway okay uh the next question is from you okay you've got it written here if the eiffel tower was to fall to the south west which embassy would it hit okay so For full points, people must answer without any clues, I think. And you have a 1 in 200 chance of guessing because there are only 200 countries, really. Mm. So do you want to have a guess, Grandma? You can guess any country. Which embassy would it hit? So I'll make it clear. If the Eiffel Tower was, was a huge wind and it just toppled to the southwest, the top of the embassy, sorry, the top of the tower would crash into an embassy more or less. Oh my God, I'll what? give you a clue. Yeah, go on. I'll give everyone a clue. Yeah. In this embassy, I hosted a big event once. Oh. Do you know? No, I can't remember. No, I did know. It's the Australian embassy. Yeah. It's right there by the... Uh, that's where I did right. that big show yes, where the lights you know flashed. You, you knew it was right yes. there. Grandma, you're not going to win the quiz and you're the no, quiz I mistress. <laughs> But, you know, come on, I'm 90 and I, I know, haven't got such a good yeah. memory. <laughs> no, you do, actually. You do have a really good memory. Oh, dear. But I do remember you going there. Yes, I do. Mm, the yeah. pictures were brilliant. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so it's about 400 meters away. So I figure if it, the tower were to blow over on a corner, it might reach it. But all the, for people playing at home, there are a lot of embassies down in that yeah, corner. So you yeah, could have really guessed yeah, yeah. any. It was a bit of an unfair question. Here's the uh, the last question, Okay. Last question. I'm going to read it, and you can have a guess, but it's very hard. Okay. The famous elevators on the second level of the Eiffel Tower don't go up vertically. They're on a sort of diagonal because the tower's like a big A-shape sort of. And it was really hard for the companies in the 1880s to try and make it. Mm. And they really wanted a French company to do it, and no French company wanted to do it. Right. Eventually, they had to get an American company to do right. it. 
the question is, what is the name of that American company? Mm. Very tough, uh, but I'll give a clue. People can already guess it if they know. Uh, a few clues. It's named after some American brothers. The same name of this elevator can be found in many, if not most, of the lifts and escalators around Paris. Mm. The name has four letters, and it is also the name of my son. Do you remember? Otis. <laughs> Otis. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's called the Otis Elevator. Really? It's not, there are some people who think that we named our son after the oh, after right. the lifts in the Eiffel Tower. That's not the case, no. but it's a it's a coincidence. All oh, right. So, um, did you guess it? Eventually. No, I wouldn't have done. No. no if you hadn't to give me the no, clue. Fair enough. Um that's our questions for the day. Yes. Thank you for being a quiz master with me. I've loved it, darling. Thank uh, you very much. My pleasure. And I wonder I'll one more question for you while we're doing it. You before we press record, you said uh you were asking me about my life in Paris. Do you think what what do you think about me living there? What do you, what does it make you think? I I just you found somewhere you love. And and that's that's the whole, that's life, isn't it? Because uh, you, as you know, I've got my grandchildren all over the world. They don't, they don't, there's only one, two, two of my 12 grandchildren in this country. Mm-hmm. So it's, they've all found somewhere they love, mm-hmm. and you did. Mm-hmm. And, and I can see that when you're talking about it. So, yes, I couldn't wish any more for you. That's why I love you, Grandma. I love you too. And we can finish on that note. Thank you. Bye. So there you have it. How did you go? Did anyone get 10? Leave a comment on social media this week and let me know. And speaking of social media, I don't know why, but I don't think I've ever read out comments from Facebook and Instagram where the, uh, I don't know, the praise and the corrections and the kind words and the fun stories flood in. Uh, Here's one from Danny Thomas that I feel like I should really, uh, I don't know, I think I should really tackle it here. Danny Thomas comments on the episode about Deauville. He says, great episode as always. This is on Facebook. Though you might have missed the date of the invention of photography by the better part of a century. I think I said rather quickly the photography was from like 1910, 1900. I looked it up. Turns out it's about 100 years earlier than that. Although, come on, I looked at one of the first photos. I don't know if I'd call it a photo. I guess I was thinking the the famous postcards of Paris are from around 1910. But yes, yes, yes. It's much older than that. I think I'll do this more often though. Read out the uh, social media comments. So leave them there. The Earful Tower. Check it out. Or check them out on Patreon. There's lots of comments there too. Patreon dot com slash the evil tower how's that for a minimalist ad not even going to go on about it go and check me out there and help this show run the other thing i thought would be fun before we finish is uh have a little listen to aj hackett the mullet wearing uh new zealander from 1987 being filmed after that bungee jump we talked about in the previous question i found the original video which i'll be sharing again this week but have a little listen to him AJ, do you think that now you're going to have problems with the French police? No, I don't think so. I think they're really quite reasonable people. And um, I'm sure they'll see it as uh, an inspiration for for the people of Paris and France and the world. (laughs) Now, if that's not confidence, I don't know what is. I'm going to leave it there. Next week, the letter F, I gave a little, little, little clue about what it could be. Maybe you'll figure it out, and I'll be back then with that episode. Thanks, everybody, for listening. This is the AB season of the Earful Tower. Thanks to Press and Eddie. Thanks to Lena and Grandma. Thanks to all the Patreon members. And thanks to Gustav Eiffel for building that thing and giving me the inspiration for the name of this show along the way. Merci beaucoup, everybody, and au revoir. (laughs) 